This is episode 122 of the XY podcast with Amy Baker. Between the podcast, the Facebook group, and the online training platform, we are always listening to the XY community to better understand what it is advisors are loving at the moment and what are the things that they want to learn more about. And one of the things we've noticed that advisors love more than anything is just being able to listen to what other advisors are up to in their businesses. Today's guest is a great example of this, which is why we're really excited to share this week's episode with you. Amy has been in and around the XY world for a few years now, and it's been really cool to see how far she's come in her business. Clayton from XY and Amy discuss some really in-depth pieces of the financial planning process, but one area that really stands out is Amy's approach to outsourcing the investment piece of her business, giving her way more time to focus on the parts of her value prop she absolutely loves which is helping her clients articulate what it is they actually want to achieve in life and creating a financial game plan to help them get there. Amy discusses her journey in the behavioral finance space, how to handle clients who have a scarcity mindset around money, and Clayton drops the question, do you ever feel like there's an end date to working with a client? We really hope you get something out of this conversation, and if there's anything you think that we can be doing to create a better podcast experience for you, Don't be afraid to reach out and say hello at xyadvisor.com. Hub24 is an ASX listed company with over $10 billion funds under management and one of the fastest growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 are the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market-leading managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com.au. Amy, what's happening? Jeez, you just put me on the spot then. (laughs) Where do I start? Where do we start? All right, all right. Lots going on, heaps going on. Yeah, so we used to hang out a few years ago uh, when, and we were just discussing when we used to sing in bars. Mm. Uh, We didn't really care who was listening. Yep. And... um, (laughs) And you know we were we were earlier into the to the business piece. Even though you've been in finance for quite a while, right? Yes, I have. Yeah. But that was you know you try and try again until you succeed. So yeah. uh, I think this is like third time lucky. Awesome. When when I sort of the X Y advisor sort of crew started coming together in the early stages, um, I think I was about eighteen months into starting up this third business yes. of mine. So, and I started this one organically. So, you know, you have really busy times, you have really quiet times when you start up a business. Now it's nice and consistent, Yeah, you know, and very busy. <laughs> yeah. How, how have you, how have you picked up the majority of your clients? Referrals through other clients. Yep. Yeah. Um, so going back to the singing, <laughs> right? Cause you can sing, you're a jazz singer. I was, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a, that's a weird skill set that not many people have. It's like being really good at, you know, uh, like Baccarat or something, some random thing. Right. Really? I wouldn't compare it to Baccarat, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I've never ever heard that. Um, but, uh, anyway. But jazz singing, you know, yeah. I, I, I was a pretend rock singer. Yeah. But you were a real jazz singer. Yeah, I, I dedicated a lot, of, a lot of years, in fact, 12 years of training um, to music uh, before I got into finance. But uh the reality of performing arts hits you when you get into your mid twenties and you yeah hard. have a baby and you go oh, I've got to yeah. have to get a real actually I, I didn't have the baby first but I fell pregnant and I was studying music and I was working I was working in finance but just part time yes. um, so I was just starting to put my foot in the top you know and get I got out of hospitality because I yeah. realised I needed a day job yes. um, there was actually no flexibility whatsoever in hospitality so that's sort of how I got uh-huh. into finance and. What I found myself doing is problem solving and that's what got me into advice. So, but, uh, you know, reality bites, so to speak, and children became, you know, the priority. Yes. So I had to put the music stuff on the back burner, but then I fell in love with doing what I'm doing now. So I still sort of sing and I was listening to jazz this morning, you know, it keeps me happy. But it just, it just, I know that I can't make a career out of it. It doesn't, it doesn't impact the way I, imp- I make the impact these days, I sort of, you know, you had all the idealistic, you know, your big dreams when you're growing up. Um, but as I said, reality bites and you just got to. Something you said really interests me, actually. You said you were problem solving and then that's what got you into financial planning. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, well, 
Getting into finance, first I was working in accounts, uh, sort of just bookkeeping kind of work, um, product management with a, a interior design business. And um, I sort of would see issues with their finances, the cash flow or whatever, and I could sort of see that things could be resolved, diff- like things could be done differently. Then I ended up in uh, St George Bank in collections. Sort of that at that point, I started studying, um, and every single case that came in through the system, so through the call centre, like that you'd a call would drop, your screen would open with the contact details and you'd have to get a snapshot very quickly of what the situation was. And I would say nine times out of ten the scenario was preventable. Their debt issue was preventable with advice. So be it uh, income protection for someone who is actually fallen ill and unable to work um, or just debt management, people just don't know how to actually manage their money very well. Um, people don't understand how some of their mortgages or lines of credit or even th- the fact that they've got an offset account yet money was going in the wrong bank. Just really messy stuff that was really easy to fix. I would often get in trouble because I wasn't kicking my KPI in terms of the numbers of calls and promises I was getting because I would sit there and counsel people. Oh, wow. So that's sort of when I realised that I was <laughs> I was kind of like in the wrong part of the banking world there. Um, the only thing I found that was a bit hard to resolve on, you know, in calls were marriage issues. So you'd find people, call, you know, in situations where there's no insurance, like, you know, death in the family, uh, not being able to work because of illness or, you know, those kind of scenarios where we know with the right product it could be resolved um, or the right advice, obviously. Um, and then... Again, the cash flow stuff, managing, you know, simplifying banking, understanding. It's really, you know, you're nodding your head. It's really yeah. simple to us. But to the majority, there's a lot of people out there that really get themselves into hot water and they don't know how to get out. So that really gave me a drive and then, um, you know, threw myself into financial advice. But from a different, I guess, perspective to most people, I think, different uh, direction into the industry. Wow, if I think about it, it's very similar to my journey. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So music, mm-hmm. can't can't pay the bills, move across into accounting mm. and then fall in love with the personable side and, yep. and then find myself in financial planning. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you do find yourself in the, the personable side. You, you, are, you sort of start establishing relationships and buying into people's stories and wanting to fix things in some way or, sh- you know, like not that we can ma- wave a magic wand, but I guess that's what advice is. It's giving direction. It's guiding or coaching. You know, the coach is a buzzword at the moment for what we do. But, um, you know, there'll be another buzzword in, in the future and it basically all comes down to the same thing. We're just giving guidance. Along the way, yes, there's product and there's this, you know, the compliance and everything else, but the, the you know, overlay of everything is a relationship. And that's what I love about it. That's what keeps me going. Yes. Yes, because a a lot of the stuff that happens in the background, you know, the the formal written pieces of advice and the PDSs and the Mm -hmm. compliance regimes and everything, it's uh, it's very burdensome. Yes. That's the stuff that I get frustrated with. Yeah. Um, and also the negative press is also really annoying. So, you know, I'm I'm trying to tell positive stories or write um, sometimes when I get the time to write a, an article or a blog or um, have those good conversations with clients as opposed to letting that weigh me down. And I do also now I'm in a position with have, having built my business to a point, I outsource as mo- the most burdensome <laughs> stuff. It's like yes. someone else can do that. So then, you know, as long as I'm ticking those compliance boxes, I know that um, I'm looking after the client, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. It's um, it, the journey I think financial planning has been on is, is, an, interesting, uh, is an interesting story. And I, and I think coming out of the life agency model of product and then, you know, uh, uh, selling superannuation products – the more people I speak to, especially these days, and it's changed, I think, when I first started asking these questions five years ago, um, I wasn't getting a lot of answers that were set that would set me up as an advisor. I think it was all very sort of 
ethereal. You know, there, there, there was this thing that came out called uh, goals-based advice. Mm. And, um, and that, you know, that shook everyone. And then on top of goals-based advice, you had uh, Baz, the, the, the social advisor, and, and he was saying not only could you do goals-based advice, but you could talk about it on the internet. Mm, mm. And then it, it, it's it's amazing to see uh, you know those those few small pivotal moments that this industry has taken, and uh, and now a lot of people are having these conversations, and it's awesome to to watch it and to listen to it. It's an interesting thing that I've always considered, and you're one of the only people that I can sort of relate to this on, but I, I actually strongly believe that uh, music and creativity plays a plays a great role in being able to be a good advisor. 100%. Because there is this, because as an advisor, you have to be creative in the way that you solve a problem for people because yeah. while we may become an expert in a certain style of advice or a certain method of delivering advice or even using a certain product. And we may even scope down our entire business to, to, to specifically look after a, a demographic of, 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 you know, of your choosing. But ultimately, everyone is different mm. and everyone has slightly different needs. And even if they fall within your perfect client, mm. then what's going on in their life is very different to the next person. Absolutely. And as an advisor, it is our job to advise on financial matters. And a financial advisor advises on financial matters. And and those financial matters could could be anything. And of course finance is also life. Absolutely. So you've got to be adaptable, in other words. Hugely adaptable. Yeah. So when you what I'm hearing you say in terms of the you know, uh, looking at being creative um, and all, and problem solving and bringing in the issue of finance and and that causes huge amounts of stress for many people. And what we're doing is actually trying to resolve those issues. So we do have to as being as creative as possible. Like we've got to adapt to the scenario that they're facing and put ourselves in their shoes, understand the scenario completely, be it a single person, married person, divorced person or someone coming through a separation. Um, So as I've grown as a person, my life experience has helped me be a better advisor. Um, You know, I as you, you remember me when I was a single mom, you know, being a mom of three kids and I started the business organically, that wasn't easy so when I sit down with clients that are struggling and sitting at the table, scratching their heads, going, how the hell can I do that? My experience has been able to relate to them and say, I've actually been down this road just because I'm, you know, sitting here in corporate outfit and, and you know, have this experience and business behind me now. I've also been in your shoes. So that's one thing. But I think the adaptable thing is, you know, the creativity, try, trying to work out how we communicate in the best way that they all understand so they can implement. That is actually, I think, yeah, the most, that's, that's the key to, the you know, the job we do. I think that's where our success lies more than actually the strategy because that can, you know, black and white on paper can look great. Um, but, you know, as I do and many advisors who who be listening to this can um, relate that clients just go, look, I just trust you. And that's just not good enough anymore, is it? With what we've just seen with the Royal Commission, you can't just have someone go, I trust you because what what happens when things go wrong if they're not implementing the advice or you're not really delivering on the service because they're not actually understanding or they're not implementing what you're doing or if, if we're dealing with say a cash flow situation or a debt reduction or even say sellers sacrificing to improve their retirement planning whatever the strategy may be they need to understand what the outcome is and how to actually do it with you you know we've got to say this is what we do we can't do everything for them we're not sitting there holding their purse and tr- you know paying for their groceries and paying their bills. They've got to take that responsibility. So it's a matter of how we communicate that and how we actually get them to be on board with this. So that, I think, is where the creative thing is, is how we can communicate and how we get them to, you know, make it happen. Because at the end of the day, it's like going to a personal trainer. Personal trainer is going to tell me to lift a certain amount of weights or, you know, jump on the skipping rope or go for the jog. 
but they can't do it for me. So they've got to work out how to motivate me, the same as what we do. We have to motivate our clients and get them, you know, and that does take creative thinking at times. That's a very good point. And um, and I think you absolutely, uh, I haven't considered it as much as that, but I, I think you're right. I think the creative piece it does come down to how best to communicate with a particular client. Mm. That's a really good insight. Um, it's how when we, it, with music, how we interpret the music as, yeah. a, as a musician, as a yeah. singer, anyone yeah. who's playing an instrument. Um, I had a teacher, um, Kerry Bedell, rest in peace, she was amazing. Um, she, w- for the first six months of me training with her, would not let me sing a note. I had to listen to, say, for example, um, Black Coffee uh, as a jazz song, um, but and I had to find five different artists who, who could sing that song and they would all have their own versions of it. So you listen to Ella Fitzgerald, Peggy Lee, Sarah Vaughan, you've got all these different amazing artists and you'd go, every single one of them brought their own style and quality and everything to them and I found that they would all speak to me differently. And as over time, as you get better at it, all of a sudden I created my own version of that same song. And I think that's what we do um, with our advice and how we work with clients. As we use, like I say with my clients when they meet me the first meeting, I, I say it's complimentary because it's like a job interview. I said the, the, the goal is that we're going to be working together for a very long time. It's not one year, it's, it's ongoing. And that means, and you know, there is going to be a long-term relationship established. What I find is after... And uh, the first year I meet with them several times, um, over time I adapt, like the song, I adapt to that way, to a way of communicating or motivating that particular client, if that makes sense. So I do find myself going, you know, building the relationship and knowing what works with them, what motivates them, how to, you know, how to get them moving in the right direction when it comes to their financial plan. Um, And also, you know, that I guess it's the you know the key things to a relationship is sort of what's important to them. I mean, a lot of this is is quite you know just human skills really, but um, I think it does come. It is part of the rich tapestry that we weave as advisors. Yeah, instead of that relationship is a very long term ongoing, and as you become closer to these particular clients, you know how to communicate to that family versus to that family versus to that couple versus to that single person and what, you know, and so on. So, yeah. Wow, because ultimately financial advice is, as you said, it, it's it's black on white, sure, as the official mm. piece. But the way that we gauge our success is the outcome that the client achieves. Absolutely. And yep. so if we're using one tactic to get client A to do X, Y, Z, and then we're using the exact same tactic on client B, but it's not working, well, then that's on us because we haven't been able to figure out how to get that client to make the better decision, to get the better outcome, to live a better life. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're dealing with behaviours yeah. more than anything. Yes. So I, met, I, I sort of found that a few years ago, and this is why when we were talking before, um, looking at, you know, uh, in ways of outsourcing, I should say, for... Um, bringing managed accounts into my business because I realised my job was not me being a stock picker or building portfolios and sitting behind the desk and looking at the market. My my job needed to be more in, in, involved with my client and um, and there, there was more involvement when it comes to cash flow modelling, retirement planning. It's not a set and forget. It's not just about product. Superannuation is in itself a product. Insurance is in itself a product. The managed accounts or the portfolios or the direct shares, whatever you're doing in terms of the investment, they are products. But we're threading so much more around those products than, you know, than, you know, to make the actual advice piece. So that's sort of something I did a couple of years ago is I started looking at my business and going, how can I be better at that than because I knew that I was spending so much time doing stuff that I didn't like, you know, the you know the boring stuff, the compliance stuff. We all have to do the compliance stuff. I understand and respect that wholeheartedly, um, but I do 
use a para planner who's fantastic. I have a compliance officer who oversees my, my work. I use many, you know, as SMA for the investment part of it. Um, so, so there's all these little parts of my business that I just don't do anymore. Yeah. Mm. Same as like how some people, you know, in a business, I also have a bookkeeper and accountant. Yeah, 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 of course. You know, so I'm not doing everything, but what I am doing is is calling up my clients, catching up with them and having the relationship and then understanding, because it is behaviours, understanding their emotional state sometimes about their money. And one thing I want them to enjoy is their life and their lifestyle because that's what they're making the money for. Wow. So you've got really all the bits that you don't like about advice outsourced to professionals. Yeah, that and, are better at it than I am. And you just spend your day gallivanting around having <laughs> coffees with your clients. I no, see how this rolls. No, not exactly. I see. <laughs> not exactly. I do, you know, I, I do, there is there is a strategy and I do write, um, you know, scope of work. So I do, I do do the sit down and I do my own research. I do I do do that. Um, the uh, the writing of the SOA I outsource. Of course, the investment stuff. I know that there are so much. There are experts. Um, you know, Angela Ashton, who is um, head of Evergreen, who does an amazing job. She was female investor of the year this year. So she, I know my clients are getting looked after by the best, yeah. way better than me. Yeah. I'm just an advisor. I'm not an investment specialist. Yes. Um, you know, I. There's certain things that I know that I'll fall over with, so why not give that to good people? Yes. You know, so that's basically how I've sort of built my business. It took me a long time to work that, well, maybe not that long, but it, because it, I've, I've gone through a few different phases in my career, but it, in the last five years, it was halfway through, I went, I've got to make some massive changes to the way I do things because I'm, I'm never going to grow in, a, in terms of business, but in terms of me personally as an advisor, and I, my growth spurt grow, is gone so far in that period of time by letting go. Sometimes yeah. it's really hard for people to let go too. Yes. Something you said just before was uh, you were on a goal or, or a mission to get better at the stuff that you did enjoy. Mm. So not only outsourcing the things that you don't enjoy and that and that you've identified uh people that can take care of those things for you. But you also said you wanted to get better at the parts that you enjoyed. And that's a, that's a sign of a real professional, in my opinion, is that they, they, they figure out what they're good at and what they're not good at. They take care or get bring other professionals in to take care of that part. But they also spend a lot of time on their own craft of mm. what they are good at and what they, are, or what they do enjoy. Um, because in a lot of ways the, the journey of XY has been to discover uh, that piece, exactly what you're talking about, is what else uh, our advisor's doing. Can we dive into that a little bit? Uh, I'd, I'm interested to know what it was that you did to get better at that piece that you enjoyed more, which is everything else but the investment management. Um, I read a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of the behavioural side, so... Yeah. Yeah, I've read a lot of books. I'm still doing a lot of work on cognitive therapy behaviours and um, e behavioural economics because um, you really need to understand other people and how to communicate effectively. Um, and I think also, you know, I've, I think you just, just don't stop learning. I also ask for feedback. That's really important to go back to the clients and go, you know, how are you going with this? And and measure yourself a little bit and also talk to other people about other people who aren't actually seeking advice. That was another thing. It's talking to people who don't seek advice and understand, well, what do you understand an advisor to be? Um, and this has just been over the years, um, going to conferences, listening, you know, being involved in XY community as, as such, you know, um, also other industry bodies, you know, AFA, um, there's so many things that you can do to keep growing and also have mentors. That's another thing. Always have mentors. Never be the smartest person in the room. Yeah. So that's, I guess, you know, I, I'm studying again. I'm always, I'm always looking at ways of improving. You know, I think we always have to do that, you know. Absolutely. Otherwise it gets boring. You become complacent and yes. then, you know, if you're not challenged, then, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a sad space to be in. Yeah, Absolutely. Behavioural finance is something that uh, I know a little bit about, but not a lot, you know. I don't know heaps about it. And 
One of the, one of the co-founders here at XY is Ray Jaramus. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he just recently graduated a psychology, a degree really? in psychology. Really? Yeah, I remember when he was, he, him and I talked about this a couple of years ago. Yeah. I remember, I know Ray. <laughs> um, it was actually Ray and I started talking, at, I'd say, two or three years ago and um, that's, I think, when I first got my hand on one of those books. So, yeah, it's been. And I'm oh. just revisiting Nudge at the moment. So I'm the Nudge. What, what book is it? Nudge. Nudge. Tell yeah, me about it. I haven't a, heard of it. Uh, can I get yeah, my phone please. out? Yeah, please. Bring it out. I'm doing the way I manage my time books. Uh, it's it's cheating, but audio books are just saving my life at the moment because um, I have I have a bookshelf with sorry bookshelf a bedside table with about six books on it, and I never I get I'll, I'll start one, I get to third fourth chapter, and then I get onto something else. It's the way my brain works. So um, I've discovered audio books. So I'm giving another business a plug here, <laughs> um, but honestly, if your time um, challenge like I am. I've got three kids, a husband, a, a business. I've got horse races. We've got, you know, we own horses. We've got, I've got uh, two other small businesses think concepts mm, on the side. I've got side so hustles, much nice. going, and I'm studying. So there's so much going Jesus on. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. Sort of my head spins when I think about that a bit. So yeah, Nudge is uh, Richard Thor. So um, Richard Thor also wrote or was, um, uh, Misbehaving, I believe. And I think who wrote, um, and if anyone, yeah, I could be wrong with this. Um, thinking uh, big and small, or, yeah. So yeah, these are the books that, yeah. So uh, and and then I've also there's another one I'm I'm doing reading sort of like a thesis or sort of a course on which is uh, cognitive behaviour therapy that I've mentioned before, and then I'm also doing a t- uh, a course with a lady named Alina um, Berdyovsky. I can't say her name properly, um, which is sort of like. Um, yeah, it's sort of like life coaching in a way, but wow. but again, it's it's again think about thought patterns and the way we sort of find ourselves falling quite complacent in our way of thinking, and a lot and a lot of people do this with money, so we fall into a habit, a pattern. So what we as advisors, and this is why I'm doing all this, is what we need to do is change our attitudes, behaviours around our money. That's how we're going to actually see an improvement. It's like, you know, you're changing a habit, like um, how people change their habits of getting up every morning and exercising, for example, or the way they eat. It's a process and you can, re, you know, fall back. And then but if you keep pushing and pursuing the changes, you'll all, all of a sudden find it becomes the habit. So it's the same kind of concept with money. It's changing our attitudes and, and attitude is a really important factor as well because a lot of people have a negative mindset when it comes to money, scarcity mindset. So we've, you know, what I do with clients is the first part of it is just getting the simplifying their banking or um, getting their understanding of how compound interest is working as opposed to borrowing money to, you know, falling backwards. It's about savings and seeing the positive side of things and, and that money is something that you're working for to enjoy for a lifestyle. So setting goals that are actually getting, giving them enjoyment. So then putting tools in place so that their behaviours change and then they're rewarding themselves with these good things and it all comes out of wealth wealth creation, which is a win-win scenario. Wow. Yeah. Where do I sign up? (laughs) (laughs) That is so well articulated, my God. I don't know where this comes from. (laughs) That was excellent. That was such a good uh, stream of thoughts. You know, obviously you've been Doing this for a long time and thinking about it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, there's a lot of thought that goes into this. Yeah. I'd just love to be able to, there's, I'm, I've got so many little projects I want to do. I just wish I had more hours in the day to, to nut stuff out because I, I want to work on a bit of a course and stuff for this stuff that we'll I'm talk, talking about. Uh, well, talk to me about, so, 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 uh, so what projects would you like to work on? I would like to sort of format out what I do with my clients into sort of like a an online program for people and wow. also do some maybe, you know, one-to-many sort of like courses and stuff, I mean, just uh, seminars just so I can go really it, it isn't rocket science. This is this is my formula and sort of but I've just got to map it out because, again, every, every individual is different. So how I deliver it to a client is going to change each time. But this, as I said to a client yesterday, the formula is the same. It's the delivery. So it's not. It depends on really what makes someone tick. For me, I've got to work that out. That's why I meet them regularly in the initial stages to actually get un- to understand 
more about them and, you know, because you give them homework and then they come back and then they go whether they've done that or they respond and some people don't. It might be too hard. Then I've got to simplify it or, you know, think about how I can get them to do some, do it differently so that I get the same result or they get the same result actually. But this, at, the, this, at the end of the day, we're on the journey together because, as you put it perfectly, our we, the way we measure is to see our clients succeed and that they are in that the road to wealth creation or, a re, you know, a, a healthy retirement um, where they're not in a situation where they're sort of just living on, you know, Centrelink or whatever, whatever the case may be, our way we measure ourselves is the success of our clients. So, how to deliver is is my biggest challenge on all of this, all of that that I just spoke of. Yeah. So, basically, getting what it is that you do and trying to scale it up, so yeah. to, to one to many. Um, I think it's just really it's financial education, but it's just my version of it. Um, I think workshops. Now, I don't want to put too much on your plate because clearly. <laughs> It's uh, uh, very full. However, Ben Nash has done workshops to a, co- to a great success. Mm. And um, from what I can tell, it, it, they're not entirely difficult to put on. So, um, yeah, I, I, think, I, I think creating, put it this way, he, he struggled a lot with putting together a short course, an online short course. I mm. think that's quite, uh, especially if it's a substantially long one. It, it can be quite difficult to 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 produce. Mm. Um, however, he does he does he's done quite well with with workshops. So I think um, as you know, m- m- in my life, I always just try to figure out what's the easiest thing to do out of everything to achieve. And so, out of workshops and creating a course, you listening, recommend? well, <laughs> listening to you talk, and if you were to able to replicate the way that you've communicated to me to a room full of people, which I have no doubt you could do. I think you'd. I think a, a workshop would be really good for you. Oh, well, Ben's been on my radar, but I've also been watching him going. Damn, that guy's busy. If anyone's got a full like plate, I would expect. You know, it's he, all social media. Yeah. It's it, he, <laughs> he's just normally sitting around, and he puts a suit on, and he goes and walks around. His wife takes pictures of him. And... Right. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. No. There's a lot. There is a lot going on, but I, I that is that is definitely on the radar. I also am working with. Uh, a group of women, so not outside of the industry. So I think it's really important to collaborate. And we often talk about really connecting with other, like, you know, similar businesses to refer. But I found my success actually collaborating through a networking scene. And I've got a whole bunch of women. We're working on a project together at the moment. And we're calling ourselves at the moment the committee because I couldn't come up with anything better. The committee. Um, but the concept really is because, you know, 45, I think the, there was a 45% growth in female business uh, businesses Jesus. in the last, yeah, in wow. the, last, um, the last year. Um, it, there, the female entrepreneur space is just incredible. And it's actually not just in Australia, but it's worldwide. Wow. Wow. So I, the, I went to a portfolio construction forum conference last, uh, no, it was this year in August, and the behavioural economics uh, guy spoke of this particular uh, concept of, you know, trends and and how we as uh, advisors or in, in finance, in the finance space, need to change our way of communicating and the way we do things by looking at global trends and of which one of them is being the female entrepreneur space, which... I feel I kind of belong to because I've been self-employed now. and Oh, God, I think over 10 years now. Wow, that's been a long time. Um, so you look at uh, basically what I'm, I'm doing is now collaborating with women that are all about empowering other people similar to what we do as advisors. So one's a nutritionalist, one's a stylist, one's, you know, um, a, a lifestyle coach, one does online marketing and there's so many there's so many women out there that can and not and not just women, I shouldn't just say women, but men and women, but I was sort of like looking at this particular market and space. So I'm building a little concept there where bringing in the financial education thread into the whole lifestyle and well-being, um, which is something actually uh, Lee Shoulders uh, been very successful at as well. Yes. She she did that with the yoga, thing, you know, concept and well being, and was and still is quite successful. Now she's doing um, traveling the world and doing speech, you know, speaking on this very subject. Yeah, Lee's done very well for herself. She has. So you know, I, that's sort of a that's one of my projects as well. 
and 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 how what's the framework how how are you how are you all getting together and and seeing results it's still very early days so the concept being um, we start off, you know, a lot of there, there are a lot of business groups that have women catch up and do drink champagne and network and it's all very nice and feels great and everyone walks away, but nothing really gets, you know, done. There's maybe a few business cards exchanged, but really no serious relationships. So I thought the concept of this is we get on a panel, we have a big lunch. This is all getting videoed. We may do bod- podcasts as well, but then it will go to different channels, media channels, um, with, then, you know, obviously forums and threads and information that we're all giving away. So it's not limited to this particular group of women. This is going to be an ongoing exchange of information. So instead of a woman going, you know, a woman, I shouldn't just say limit myself there, but instead of a person um, as self-employed or, or someone who wants to make a change in their life and grow um, some level of self-development, go to one particular professional they're going to one lunch and not paying for different, you know, pieces of advice from five different people. They're getting in one lunch a panel of different types of advice and they're taking some really key information. And then they can follow those people or they can actually follow the group in, and meet other people. Very similar to, I guess, the way XY Advice has collaborated over, over the years and evolved is that you're bringing in a lot of other people oh, yeah. to give away Really oh, yeah. great intellectual property. Absolutely. And that's the concept is giving away some really good information um, to actually help empower and grow people. So, and this was a way for me, I thought, to make finance fun because it, it becomes a lot of people just sort of go, oh, I don't, they put their heads in the sand. It's a common problem we all deal with. Yes. Um, I think the stat from, you know, is possibly still only 20% of people seek financial advice, yet everyone needs it. Yes. Um, most of pe- most people are going to fall short at retirement if they don't get it. But, you know, and the Royal Commission did do no favours for that cause at all. So we've got to get really creative on how we can get that out, how we can get a message out to the masses in a, you know, non-abrasive way and go, this is actually not a bad thing to do and it's actually quite empowering. It actually will... Be, it is part of your well-being. It is part of your mental health. It's a part of all of these things. It's not just um, about getting rich because we, you, you know, most advisors are dealing with, you know, people are actually in this, they come to us almost too late. Yeah, on occasion, yes. You know, I, I love it when I see a couple who are already, they're just, they're, you know, they've got young kids and they're already just feeling that pinch but they're getting their heads around it and they've got another 30 years of accumulation. It's like, fantastic, you just, this is great. It makes me really excited because there's so much work we can get done and they're going to be so set. It saddens me when I see those clients that are just going, oh, my God, I should have spoken to you 15 years ago. Oh, well, you know, maybe they, I wouldn't be in the situation I'm now, but they should have spoken to someone 15 years ago. Um, but there's a lot more. We can still fix things. But there's just a lot more work to be done and it might not be the same result you're going to have with the, the couple who's just starting out and they've got the toddlers and they're, they're filling the pinch of childcare fees and a mortgage in Sydney, but it's only short term, you know, for the long term gain. So that's where, that's my sweet spot as well. I love, I love working in that space. That sounds, I mean, if you're, if you're able to push, pull all that together, I, I think it sounds like a, a really big, uh, uh, goal and and I, I would love to see you do this. I mm. think it sounds phenomenal. Uh, messaging is such a such a key part. I think of the future of financial advice. Um, I've started seeing different styles of of messaging. This you know this lifestyle mixing mm. it with other uh, um, other uh, businesses businesses is super cool. Like. Yeah. Um, you know, instead of just looking at someone's finance in a vacuum, you're looking at all the different pieces around. And and sure, if you spend the next twenty years, you might be able to get good at all the all of those different little bits and pieces. But to work in a in a in a tribe of people that are dedicated to improving the lives of the people that fall into it, yeah, absolutely, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. That's a yeah. beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I, I, another strange uh, thing I just saw recently. I shouldn't say strange. Another unique. Uh, messaging um, that I've seen recently was a financial planning firm that was uh, advertised like an app, 
they look like an app. So uh, you go onto their website and it's sort of, you know, all, all the messaging is, looks like an app. And uh, I, I thought it was an app up until I scrolled, you know, the lovely disclaimer that advisors know to look for right at the bottom and mm. sort of read, oh, okay, th- this is a financial planning firm. But the way that it was communicating was very much... Uh, very much in, in that in that vein of being an app. And it came from, I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but I certainly do have, you know, it's getting getting quite involved in financial advice industry, the profession, I should call it. Um, I see a lot of really progressive stuff coming out of Queensland. Really? Yeah, Queensland. <laughs> Queensland happens, I've noticed, up in Queensland, they focus on... At lifestyle, I think a bit well, it's more. Absolutely, lifestyle is is everything in Queensland. I mean, yeah. you've got the weather. Yes, you know, my husband's from Queensland, so I kind of get it. I do get it. And also, I think in the headspace that they're probably in, as you suggested, is probably a bit more relaxed. But also, the type of people that that are able to find success out there are uh, aren't just that typical finance person and. Which which you know Sydney produces a lot of, mm, yeah, and um and it's that's why I'm always so so encouraged to hear uh, things that you you're speaking about so articulately as well um, about all the different things in financial advice that you're doing. Um, just pivoting slightly on the cash flow piece, mm. quite interested to hear about what you're doing there. Well, I think keeping it simple, most people overcomplicate the way they manage their money, especially with banking. So they'll have, you know, bank accounts for, you know, holiday, bank accounts for Christmas, bank accounts for this, bank accounts that, and they're they're, they're moving money from here to here to here to here to here, and they're really losing track. Um, I see that even when people have, you know, their offset account and then they might have a split mortgage and it's just you look at their, their, their life and it's just very messy. So the first thing I do is simplify it, clean it up, tidy it up. And it, it really is a no-brainer. We've got to understand what exactly are our fixed costs. It's exactly how I run my business. I know exactly how much my business is costing me. Yes. I understand that I have a buffer for my variables that yes. that kind of sort of sit in a, a particular amount there. And sometimes, you know, they'll go wave in and out, but there it's around that estimated amount. Um, and then obviously I've got my, instead of, you know, my tax and so I kind of looked at my the way I was looking at my cash flow with my business and something I, I realised I was quite good at. And when I was a single mum, I was brilliant at automating all of my bills and simplifying. So it, my money came in on a fortnightly basis. All my bills were set as scheduled payments. What was left were my variables. It was really simple. And I do that with all my clients. Now, everyone banks differently. Some couples have their – they don't have – joint accounts. So you've got to work with that, but it isn't too difficult. Um, Then it's again, the goal-based advice piece. So you work around understanding what makes them tick, the behavioural stuff. That's where that comes in, understanding what's important to them, because it's going to be very, very different to, you know, certain people. Um, Some people really just want to have security. They don't care for holidays. They don't want to go out for dinner. They just want security. Other people just want to, they don't care to have a, ho- that, a holiday. Uh, sorry, they don't care to have the house. They want the holidays. They want to be on social media all the time and be out in the best restaurants. And you've got to work that out with people. I do not want to impinge on that 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 lifestyle. I want them to understand they can have it all. They uh-huh. can. Very good. It's just a matter of managing what how it all to, looks like. What all looks yeah, like. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. yeah. And this, again, bringing it back to the first, the fundamentals is understand your fixed, work your variables, and then you've got your your savings. And obviously there's always got to be an element of savings. Of course, being a financial advisor, I'm looking at tax, I'm looking at, you know, their income and how and all of that stuff. There's far more to it than that. But um, so I, I actually can improve and, you know, that we can improve at their cash flow situation by even salary sacrificing or um, certain things where we're reducing tax to and, and or, you know, wealth creation in other avenues. So there's a few things that we work with depending on the individual scenario, but ultimately it comes down to understanding their needs and they are the ones who've got to dictate that, not me. 
A weird thing that happened to me uh, one time, and if if it wasn't for selling my business, uh, I think it may have happened again, which was I spent so long uh, figuring out how to get someone to an optimum you know, financial position. I'd worked with them to, to sort of get the best out of them depending upon what was the best communication method. As a side note, uh, Andrew Rocks, I, he, his method I always found fascinating. Uh, he simply asks people <laughs> how they like to be communicated with. Do you, do you like pictures? Do you like video? Do you like written? Oh, my God. This Alina does that, does it with me. She, I, I actually go, I have no idea. Let's just work it out together because I didn't ever thought, I've never thought of it. And what a simple and yeah. amazing question. If, if advice, if great advice is asking great questions, that's one of the best questions I've ever heard. I'm um, have to adopt that one too. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure he'd be more than happy for you to do that. Um, so one thing I noticed was I had I'd, I'd brought a couple of, or one client in particular to a point where they were out of all of the problems that they that they walked in my door with and they were about to embark on this brand new career uh, and move cities. They were actually moving to Melbourne and they actually felt like I'd done everything I could for them. It was such a peculiar and, – and it got me thinking is – is really great advice, or was he? I, I can't figure out. He may have just been looking for a reason to 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 punt me, which is you know not beyond the realms of uh, of belief. But was it that I had helped him arrive at, at at a point in life that he felt like he could tackle it by himself? Or um, and and then is there is there is there something in getting clients within, say, five years to a set uh, destination. I always thought, I've, I've heard of advisors doing this where they take clients on a five-year journey and they say, mm-hmm. let's, let's, uh, let's engage in a five-year instead of an open-ended bit. Uh, uh, and, of course, you can leave at any time, but uh, we've got a five-year roadmap and then – this is where you are and sort of, you know, we'll tick off all of these different things over five years. Um, do you do you see that as something or do you see that as, as – I guess my question is when you're working with clients, do you feel like you're ever arriving at a point in time where they don't need you anymore? Um. Yes, I've had that experience with um, a couple and it was only recent we we made some changes to their scenario um, and they just sort of went, I think it was just all too complicated. But what what had happened, Other there were other changes in their life as well. Um, but I'll, I'll bring it back to, again, people's behaviours. What, what I find when I, with the five year, I just want to, before I'll park that idea for a second because I was just, There's so many things you just said there. My (laughs) brain just went in all sorts of directions. So I'll go first to the five-year concept. I find that every time I go back and sit with a client, their goals have changed. Scenarios change. So they always throw something at me that I'm not prepared for. So I'll go back and go, right, this is what we've last done. And um, I, you know, usually can see where where they're heading with, say, their superannuation savings. Um, at some points, I used to have my prosperity. I don't use that anymore because clients were not active, you know. And so I sort of had to, you know, you've got to hit, it's a hit and miss in, in working all this stuff out and it takes time. And, but that's also what I say with my clients is that, this is going to take time. This is a journey and the clients, as they go on this journey with me, decide, realise that what they, because we're asking really probing questions, it's like what do you want? What does your life look like? What what are your goals? And we're talking sometimes it's how much money do you feel comfortable with if you were not working in terms of if you were to retire and that might seem like so far away, but if you're looking at your lifestyle as it is now, is this the amount or is it? would you like to scale back? Um, so having these conversations with clients to have them really think about 
their financial situation and have them really think about what they really want and also discussing values because people buy into other people's values. So I have that conversation too. So a lot of people will go, oh, you know, we've got to, we've got to get an investment property or we've got to do this and we've got to get into that. And, and, I, and I could see and I, you often can sense the anxiety over this and you go, is that really what you want? Usually we start working on a plan because that's what they think they want and then the next time we come back to the meeting, it is not what they want. They've worked out that that's a lot of pressure on themselves and they really just want to have that, say, for example, the Sydney lifestyle of I just want to get be you know, do my weekends away and um, have one overseas trip a year and just have an apartment. I just, you know, where I live, that's it. That's all I want. I don't want to have to have this, that and the other. And I said, we can actually do wealth creation in a different way, you know. It doesn't have to be the investment property. It doesn't have to be what other people are doing Um, because some people don't want to rock the boat too much in terms of their own life. It's, again, behaviours where we're all stuck and set in our ways. So when you come in and say, let's change things, it can be overwhelming to people. And so that brings me back to that couple is that I think I, over, you know, overprescribed, so to speak, um, a plan that over time they went, we, we're not, we can't do this. Um, that's what they did say to me they wanted, but I wasn't obviously gauging them as regularly as I should, which since then I've changed. Again, you change the way you deliver advice because you learn from these mistakes. I've, got, I've gone back and gone, where did I go wrong here? And I realised that there's a, there was a, a, a drop the ball in communicating and understanding how they were feeling about the plan. Even though they asked, they said this is what they wanted, they again were unaware that they were actually buying into someone else's values, not their own. So over time, as they, you know, matured, as their business grew, as their kids grew, as their financial circumstances changed, they realised where they were at and they realised that that's not what they wanted and they wanted to simplify things much more than where they were going. And in a way, you can sort of as an advisor go, oh, God, I feel like I've let them down. But at the same time, I really appreciated their honesty. And also I was starting to feel frustrated and guilty because that this wasn't happening, that advice wasn't going anywhere. So, again, changing the way I delivered the advice going forward and um, – also talking more about values, talking more about what their wants and needs are and saying, always go away and have a think. You know, um, I I know on the, the forum, the, the Barefoot Advisor, or Barefoot Investor, not everything he says I agree with, um, but one thing he does uh, recommend is if you're a couple, go and have your n- date night and have that conversation with each other and sort of check in. And I say that to my clients, it's something I've been t- talking about for ages and if it's just yourself you know write down what things look like it's really good I get it sounds airy fairy but it's like manifesting it's putting it out there because the more you put it out there you're more going to you know you're going to attract it or you're going to be motivated to make it happen so these are the kind of conversations I I now have with clients so you know there is no five year I'm going to get you there I'm going to get you where you need to get as we go along this journey is more the way we work so it's quite an organic approach. My goal long term, though, is very different. So we're talking superannuation. We're talking, you know, um, salary sacrificing. It's very different, but absolutely cash flow and small, short, medium term goals. That's the goalpost changes every single time with me. It that's where you get creative because they. <laughs> I've had clients come to me and go, we're going to be going to Queensland in 12 months and then I've come back in six months' time going, right, we've got to get this plan, six months to go. <laughs> no, we're not doing that now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, no, I'm not the only advisor who's, been, who's gone down and you just go, okay, well, what are we doing? Yeah. Where are we going? How's this going to work? You know, so that's sort of how I do it. Now, I haven't really answered your question in regards to that, the, the guys that you that sort of said you've done your best. I think it comes down to, again, uh, their attitudes to maybe the advice or their their own perception of how they can implement are, are they that committed to what you're saying to them? So again, it's again we've got to gauge are they actually on the same page? Because if they're not, that's where 
they're going to move on and they're going to go, you did the best. And it's happened, to, I think it happens to the best of us. Yes. It's like we've done our best and they can see you've done the best and we've thought about it and we've spent a lot of time doing it, but we might not actually have been able to get them to understand how to make it happen or really have they bought it or are they, you know, themselves, are they really committed to it or are they sitting in fear in a place of scarcity and just can't believe it can happen? Because that's the other issue we deal with. So it's, again, mindset and attitudes to money. Just listening to you talk, I I can see um, how far your uh, maturity in delivering advice has come, right? So uh, if we were to extrapolate that, say, 20 years, what would Amy 20 years from now Jesus. Give advice to you today on how to be a better advisor. I don't even know if that's possible to answer because <laughs> I, I can't. Well, I what as I said, you know, we can forecast where we're going in our businesses and our personal lives and whatever. We can sort of put out there: this is the kind of advisor I want to be. This is the kind of person I want to be. The kind of mother I want to be. Whatever it may be. Um, I guess it comes down to the fact that I've just. You know, the wisdom I have in 20 years, uh, I hope that I can penetrate further and to more um, and that I have, I'm in a position that it's going to far more, more people than just where it is now. I can't say who what that person in 20 years, this Amy, is going to say to me. I can't even imagine that yet. <laughs> I can't. I, 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 I knew that I was going to grow and wanted to grow to where I am in the last five years, and I have, and I aim to grow another five years and another and another, you know, but I don't know where I am going to be, like that that level of wisdom and maturity. Um, at just what I would like is that I've worked out a way of making sure that mo- more people have a, a good concept of their attitude and behaviour and needs and wants with their finances so that... Um, it will make a better economy if if we all just took a took a little bit more control over our financial situation, our superannuation, um, and understanding the importance of insurance. So I think if if you know we all aimed to get to that point where we can deliver more information to more people, then you know this country is going to be very comfortable and very good um, in respect to financial position. Yeah. Look, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing. Um, it's awesome to see, you know, a few years later after we were belting out tunes in, <laughs> in bars, um, to see the business that you've built and and a real sort of, I would say, uh, a, if if not mastery but a desire to master a lot of these more advanced topics that are in financial planning. Thank you very much for, for your tips on uh, the books. Um, actually, uh, uh, thinking about that just briefly, there's a there's an app you can download. It's kind of expensive. It's $120 per year, but it, it's called Blinkist, and it will take a book, an audio book, and summarize it down to its corporate, oh, sorry, uh, executive summary. Oh, cool. So, yeah, so you can now get through a book in, say, 10 minutes, an oh. audio book. I know. I feel like I've just hit the main Jeez, vein. It's like Tim Ferriss's uh, work week or whatever. Yeah, like, oh, God. pretty much exactly right. Yeah, it's actually uh, kind of overwhelming. Um, so if, if if that interests you at all, uh, if, if there's any advisors or even potential clients or, or anything, uh, if there's someone that wants to reach out with, reach out to you, how would they find you? Um, it's pretty easy. My my business name is Recab Advice because my surname is Baker. So Recab is Baker backwards. Oh, cool. So, it, you know, they can email me, which is A-M-I-E, Amy, a unique way of spelling it, Recab Advice, or just go to my website or Facebook or am I, I'm on Twitter. I'm not very active these days on Twitter. I should get active. Um, yeah, or LinkedIn. LinkedIn, Amy Baker, pretty easy. Awesome. Or they can, you know, catch up with you guys and you can pass on details. Easy. Done and done. Look, again, thank you so much for coming on. I had a really good time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was great to see you. Yeah, you too. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers.